Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. <laughs> Conway? I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. I talked to you on the phone this afternoon. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Well, do you, you think you have him? Well, we don't know, Mr. Conway. I'd like to have you tell us. Well, I do my best, but it was a year ago. Yes, I know. Uh, any uh, particular place you'd like to sit? Oh, this will be fine. Okay. <clears throat> well, you people really stay on it, don't you? Hmm? Well, I mean, it happened a long time ago, I... Thought you'd forgotten about it down here. Well, we don't like to forget anything like that, Mr. Conway. Oh, oh didn't I meet him once? Or Sergeant Carger? Yeah. He was on the case. Oh, yes. <laughs> I remember now. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Carger, Sergeant Pete Carger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications... Please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they're sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. Makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Okay, bring on the line. All right, move it right along, boy. All the way to the end of the stage. Uh, uh, Lieutenant, well, there's right, the man the up there. Uh, which one, Mr. Conway? Uh, the tall one in the dark suit. Now, That's one ahead. of them. Well, let's hey, wait till he's questioned. But I huh? wondered if I'd know him if I saw him again. That is him. Keep your eyes straight ahead. When I call your number, step out to the circle. Your address is the last place you slept in town. Number one, Thaddeus Newcomb, burglary. Where do you live? 141 West Colfax. What do you do? Plumber. Work for yourself, do you? No, consolidate a plumbing outfit on Bixby Avenue. You own a car, Thaddeus? Yeah, got a Chevy. What year, what color? 49, sort of a, sort of a gray-green. Anyone with you when you were arrested? George Trujillo. George Trujillo. Number 16. How long have you known George Trujillo? All my life. Is this your home? Since I was 14. Lived all this time. You own a gun? No. Are you married? No. Okay, number two, Henry Parch, robbery. <clears throat> Henry. Yes, Sergeant. Where do you live? West Side. The address, Henry? Uh, 233 Zender. A hotel? Apartment? What? The Zender Hotel. How long you lived there? Three years, off and on. Any weapons when you were arrested? Yeah. I had a gun. What kind of a gun, Henry? 44, Smith & Wesson. Chrome, blue steel, what? Steel horn handles, nickel plated. You have a car? No. What's your profession, Henry? Trucker. Don't look at me. Look out there through the screen. Take your hands out of your pockets. You always wear a mustache? Yeah. Anybody with you when you're arrested? No. What about Carl Engels? Don't know anybody named Carl Engels. That's him standing right back there, Henry. Take a look. Well? Which one? End of the line. He told me his name was Jack Cannon. He was with you, wasn't he? Yeah. Why'd you say no one was with you at first? It's your lineup, cop. I like to see your work. Back against the wall, Henry. Uh, yes. What was that? Nothing. Number three, Chester Abrams, open shot. Uh, I know that's him. All, All right, Mr. Conway, just a minute. All the way, hotel on 3rd Street. Four, five, six, Third 3rd Street? I think so. I've only been there a couple of days. Where'd you come from? Winnipeg, Canada. You're a Canadian citizen? No. Just been living in Canada the last couple of years. Before that? St. Louis. A little louder. Don't think they can hear you. Where are you from again? St. Louis, Missouri. That's better. 
You own a car. I've no. been certain of him ever since he walked no. on the stage, Lieutenant. Profession? He's Let's one of the sail. men who killed my wife. Okay. okay. Sergeant Carger. Yes, Lieutenant. Number three, hold for interrogation. Where'd you get a make on Abrams? Yeah. Conway spotted him right away. Here's a card. Okay. Uh, ben, the officer responsible for the arrest is here. Huh? Yeah, his name's Pritchard. Been on the force three years. He's, he's in your office. Okay. Yeah, Pritchard? Yes, sir. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. Glad to meet you. Same here, sir. Well, that was good police work picking up Abrams. What's your unit? 405. Captain Edison? Yes, sir. Long memory like yours helps a lot. Well, maybe it's because it was one of my first lieutenant. I had a beat near the Strand Theater... I was about half a block away when I heard the shots. I came up, found Conway slug cold, and Mrs. Conway dying. She was the one who gave me the description. The one filed in the crime report? Yeah. I remember her telling me what the man looked like. And she was a pretty brave woman, and I, I hated to see her die like that. It's gotten personal with me. I've been looking for Abrams ever since, I guess. Well, we've got him now, Bridget, thanks to you. You'll be hearing from him. Yes, sir. Uh, nice to meet you. The same here. See you, Sarge. Yeah. Uh, St. Louis has some stuff. Fingerprint classification. Check. FPC, key 19, primary 32 over 32, inner over outer, final 15 over 17. Mm, he's our boy. Yeah, but his name isn't Abrams. Real name, Chester Cully, alias Jack Rourke, alias George Freeman, alias Victor Adams. 13 arrests, two convictions, both armed robbery. Last one, July 19th, 1947. Got out 18 months ago. Parole? No, he did it all. Now, hold on, Ben. All right. 213, quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Right, fine. Conway thing happened 13 months ago. Cully could have been in town for it. All we have to do is prove he was here and find out who he was working with. We're closer than you think, but... Hmm? That was Asher. He went through Cully's hotel room. Turned up an army 45 hidden in the mattress. Well, Mrs. Conway was killed with a 45 slug, wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> see what happens now, Ben. Asher sent out a tag on this? Yeah, he's checking with the Army now. Hmm. Uh, uh, give me a hand here, will you, Ben? Oh, yeah. Uh, hold that darn thing. Sure. Huh? Find it? No, not yet. This stuff is all mad. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I lost it. Uh, 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 can you get that, Pete, please? Oh, yes. Everything's at once... I... Yeah, hey, lab. I got it. All right, now, easy. easy. Yeah. Yeah, he's here, but yeah, he's busy here right we are. now. Good, man, both of them. Two test slugs. Yeah, okay, I'll tell him. Where's your wife? I want you to call her as soon as you can. Oh, is she ready? No, not quite. But the kid you got has measles. Oh. You got those evidence slugs, Ben? Yeah. Here you go. Oh, good, now I'll see what we got. Now, both of these were taken from Mrs. Conway's body. No, no, just the one. The other stuck in the car seat. Oh, I see. Okay, now if I can get this waxed. Darn stuff. There. Now, one of those test slugs I just fired in the ballistics box. Oops. There you go. Oh, thanks. Okay. Stick it right here under the lens. Now. Mm hmm? Well? Take a look, Ben. All right. Now, uh, use the screws. Uh -huh. Now, revolve the slug holder slowly. Yeah. And hold it when you think the striations match. Yeah. What do you think, Ben? Uh, just a second, Pete. Uh, the test slug matches with the one that killed Mrs. Conway, right? Hmm. Like a pair of twins. You guys got yourself a case. Uh, who's the guy? A man named Chet Cully. 
Uh, what did he have to say? I'll tell you later. I haven't talked to him yet. Well, you've at least got something to talk about. Hi, Ben. Pete. Hi. Hi. Oh, stuffy in here. Okay, Cully. Let's have it. Have what? What are you jokers trying to pull? We're not trying to pull anything, Cully. I'm asking you for a statement. Statement, huh? Well, I'll give you one. Nuts. Cully, we want to know who you were working with. Dumb cops. Well, you can make it easy or you can make it tough. Any way you want it. We're giving you a chance. You don't need to give me a chance. You got nothing on me, Lieutenant. We found your gun. The bullets from your gun killed Mrs. Rita Conway in a parking lot hold up here a year ago. Two men were in on that job. The woman's husband has definitely identified you as one of them. It was your gun that killed her. Well, we've got you, Cully. We want the other guy. I don't even own a gun. Who's the other guy, Cully? Dumb cops. Who's the other guy, Cully? Dumb cops. Who is he, Cully? Dumb jerk cops. Hand me that folder. Yeah. Thanks. Where's your brother these days, Cully? Is he still in St. Louis? He was out here with you last year, wasn't he? You know we'll get him, Cully. You know that, don't you? You get nothing. You're too stupid, all of you. Get him out of here, Asher. He'll talk later on. On your feet, Chet. <clears throat> yeah, sure. You're wrong, Guthrie. I won't talk later on. I got nothing to say. Come on. Get him out. Yeah. You guys will have a hard time tying this up. You go with him, Pete. All right, then. Okay. So long, Guthrie. I hope you sleep well. Oh, my, you jerk. Come on, Ben. Cully. Cully. Stop. He's trying to get down to the garage. That crazy fool. What does he think he can do? Cully. Hey, before he hits the car out of feet, over his head. Now he's still going. Yeah. He's taking the emergency exit. We can't let him on the street. Cully, stop. Okay, Pete. Ah. Ah. He's through. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. I tried for his legs, Ben. Uh, help me. Please. Help me. Help him, Pete. Call an ambulance. When America's schools are in trouble, all America is in trouble because a strong, enlightened democracy has its roots in good, free education. America's schools are in trouble now. They are overcrowded, understaffed, often in wretched condition. You can help to improve this situation by joining with civic groups or school boards in your own community and working with them to improve conditions. <laughs> How's the head, Asher? Yeah, aches. No, oh, Ben. Well, for Wallopy gave you those cuffs. You want some coffee, Ben? Oh, no, thanks. Dave? Yeah. I'll try some. Black. Well, let's see. Kelly's got a wife in St. Louis. She's on her way out here. Yeah? I talked to her long distance. We've got to be sure about all this. Uh, test slugs from the gun we found in Cully's room match up with the slug that killed Mrs. Conway. Conway himself made a positive identification on Cully. Yeah. Mrs. Cully's going to have to know all these things, and she's going to have to know them right. She's only been married to him six months, and she's talked about false arrest and suits. Anything in the hotel room yet? Yeah, I've been staked out ever since we picked him up. No visitors? No phone calls. Mm. Uh, how about his mom machine? Here you are, Ish. Mm-hmm. 
St. Louis had a good file on him. We sent them a description of the man who pulled the job with him. Police there looked up everyone in Cully's sheet. Not a possible in the whole bunch. Hmm. They're still looking, though. It could have been somebody he tied up without hair. Yeah, it looks that way. Stats office is running through again. All we got is a medium-sized man, dark, young. And tough. <sighs> I wish it'd been Cully's brother. Make our problems simpler. Huh? He was killed in an accident in Toledo six months ago. Came in while you were out for the hospital. How about the army? Well, nothing from them yet on the gun. Well, we know that gun was the one used on Mrs. Conway, but we don't know which one of them did it. Conway was out of the picture when the shooting took place. It's a pretty good bet it's Cully's gun since it was in his room. Well, there's only one way to be sure. How's that? Find the man who was with him. Hi, Ben. Hey, time. Hi, Doc. Well, he came to you about an hour ago. He was doing nicely after we got the slug out of him. My nurse was in there giving him intravenous. She said he opened his eyes and sat right up, knocked the equipment down. Hmm. Then he tried to climb out of bed. Yeah. Yeah, the hemorrhage started right away. No way to stop it. You're doing pretty well until then. Think you'll make it? No. He asked for a priest. I got Father Hansen over here. You know what Cully did? Hmm? He broke a glass and tried to shove it in his face. <laughs> Boy, he's a real one. Yeah. You said anything? He had a lot to say. The kind of filth you hear only once in a lifetime. Yeah. It's down here. Better lose that cigarette, Pete. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Doc? Yeah. Culling? Culling, can you hear me? Sure, Gunther. That's your name? Chester Desmond Cully? Yeah. Where do you live? Oh, this... Uh... You understand you're seriously hurt, Cully? You... You're on the wrong place. You did this. Tully, you're on your way out, you know that? Yeah. We're sure to stick it both of you with me. Are you willing to make a statement now? Yeah. We want the name of the man who was with you when you killed Mrs. Conway. Cully. Doc? He hears you, Doc. Cully? I got you. I don't know what you believe in or what you feel about this. But you know we'll get that man sooner or later. Cully, you can do something in your own favor right now. Tell us who he is. Where we can find him. Now, look, every man wants a chance to... That brother, please. Most of all, I wish you... He was with me. Dirty. Jerk. Cup. Okay, Miss Allen. Get an order. Hmm? That's all, Ben. Yeah. How can you figure a guy like that, Ben? You can't. Morning, Ben. Hi, Quine. Pete around? Oh, no, not yet. Anything new? Yeah, I got a kickback on Cully. Yeah. Detroit police want to match test slugs with us. Cully sounds like the same man who robbed and killed a filling station man there six months ago. He used a 45. Mm, working alone? No, a description of his accomplice came with a request. Matches with Conway's description of the man with Cully. Yeah. The 45's U.S. Army property, all right. Stolen? They're listed as missing. Now, how about the serial? There's a figure gun disappeared in France somewhere. Cully was never in the Army. We may never get that part straightened out. 
Unless his friend tells us. Yeah. You can follow up on Detroit's request. Send him all we have. Right, sir. Ben. Oh, hi, Kate. We may have him. Huh? Crockett and Murr staked out at the hotel. Just picked up a man who came in asking to see Cully. How's it look? Two of a kind, Ben. He tried for his gun when they said they were police officers. <laughs> Okay, Rogers. Inside. Stop, stop. Now sit down, Rogers. Are you in charge, Your Honor? That's right. Sit down. Now, what's the idea of picking me up? What's the idea? Down. Big... You have a permit for the gun? Are you kidding? Now, you know why you're here. Look, you haven't got anything to hold me on. I haven't done anything. Well, what are you worried about? Now, listen, you. I don't make smart talk from nobody, cop or not. Why did you try to pull the gun when the officer stopped you? I didn't like their looks. How do I know there were cops in They it? told you. They showed you the badges. Ah, they... Why the gun? I use it. Business. What business? I travel. I sell things. Jewelry. How do you travel? What do you mean, how do Car, I... Car, plane, train, what? Train. This your home? No. Train the city. What's your address there? 4516 First Avenue. How long have you been in town? A couple of days. What train did you come in on? Uh, Santa Fe. What time to get in? I don't remember. You don't remember? No, I don't remember. Where are you staying? Rogers. Oh, look, I don't have to go through this kind of stuff. Now book me if you want to. Book me for whatever you want to book me for. I'll be out of here in 24 hours. Habeas Corpus. Oh, just book me. It wouldn't work, Rogers. We're talking about a murder. A what? A murder. Okay? Yeah. All right, Mr. Conway. Hello, Lieutenant. Mr. Conway? Sergeant. Hi. Hello, Sergeant. Mr. Conway, have you ever seen this man before? Uh, hey, turn on that light. Uh, yeah. Now, come on, stupid. Have you ever seen me before? I've seen him before, Lieutenant. Where, Mr. Conway? In a parking lot by the Strand Theater about a year ago. You're certain? I would never forget his face, Lieutenant. He and that other man killed my wife in cold blood. They killed her with a gun. Oh, what's with this? Shut up. Thank you for coming down, Mr. Conway. Yes, sir. Thank you. Goodbye, Sergeant. Sergeant. Lieutenant. All right, now what's all that supposed to mean? It means you're it, Roger. You're tied up with Cully. That's enough for us. Tied up with who? Chet Cully. The man you went to see at the hotel when the officer picked you up. Come off it, Rogers. We got your cold. You worked stick up with him. You killed a filling station man in Detroit. You killed that Conway woman out here a year ago. You've just been identified. Be smart. I know what you guys are talking about. I'm a salesman, not a stick up. That won't get you anywhere. Cully was just a name on a card to me. I was told to go see him. Who gave you the name? I forget. And Cully told us everything. Cully hasn't told you anything. No? No. I don't even think you've got it. We've got him, Roger. Well, you got to show me, Copper. Okay. We'll show you. Hey, cop, I thought you were taking him to see Cullen. We are. Don't you like it? Well, where are you keeping him? In a dungeon? Not exactly. See? Coroner's office. Yeah. We use the back door sometimes. Come on. Uh, what about Cully? Oh, he's here. You see him. Yeah. Feel all right, Rocky? I feel okay. Looks kind of peaky to me, Pete. Yeah. Oh, come on. What is this? Uh, section 2, Ben, 218. Uh, after the... Oh. What happened? He got shot trying to escape. You know we had him cold. I don't believe you, jerk cops. What was that? You dumb jerk cop. <laughs> You're hanging yourself, Roger. Come what? You wouldn't understand. Come this way, Ben. Yeah. You tell him about Cully? Yeah. He doesn't believe it. Show him. Okay. Take it back. Now open your eyes, Roger. Take a good look. No, take a good look. 
I'm looking. Let's get out and get friend, Rogers. I'll sit him up. Okay. No. No. I want you to see him real good, Rogers. This is what happens. When no, don't. Don't. Look. Look, you did all the shooting. It was crazy to do that. Done it. I never even carried him. I mean, I, mean, I, I just, just went with him on the job. I just went with him. I, I, I didn't do any of the shooting. I, come on, get me out of here. Get me out. Look, look, I, I, I didn't do any of the shooting. You, you can't hang that on me. It's okay. I'm going try. You won't? You said you were with him, that's enough. Know. You're as responsible as he was. The lineup for before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you. The lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Carter, Sergeant Pete Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off the number of their name of charge. If you have any questions or identification, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of the line, when I ask for questions or identification, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have a man. Lineup starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie with Jack Moyle as Sergeant Pete Carter. Was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunsteady. Featured in tonight's cast were Howard McNear, Bob Sweeney, Clayton Post, Bill Conrad, High Everback, Dave Young, and Stacey Harris. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> Tomorrow night, the Gene Autry Show repeats the Christmas program that has become a radio classic. On the drama portion of the program, Gene tells a neighbor boy the story of the Yuletide in truly delightful Western fashion. And the rest of the Melody Ranch gang join Gene in bringing you Christmas songs all the family will be anxious to hear. Don't forget one and all, it's the Gene Autry Show, and it's tomorrow night on most of these same stations. Another holiday observance at the Star's Address, presented by CBS Radio. Dan Coverly speaking. This Christmas, give the gift that grows in value year by year. United States defense bonds. There's no more welcome gift. And remember, for a full hour of music, nonsense, and variety, tune in to Steve Allen Show Saturday nights on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>